The Palmetto State Armory Dagger is a new Glock 19 clone that sells at only $350 in the year 2021. I'm David with Gun Deals, and this is the Palmetto State Armory Dagger. It is a Gen 3 Glock 19 clone that basically takes everything that's sort of wrong with a Glock that people love to bang on Glocks for, and it sort of fixes them, and they sell it at a super competitive price at sub $400. Now, it only comes in a cardboard box with one PMAG 15 round magazine. If you want the special case that they have made, you can buy it for another 30 bucks, and more P-Mags are only like 13 or 14 bucks. So even with all of that stuff, you can get three mags and a case and you're still just at about $400 in a spend, which is for a pretty good place to be. Jumping into the gun, the frame is super squared away. It actually has a palm swell, which is nice because it fills the hollow part of your hand when you grip the pistol. Uh, the texture that they put on it, they mark it as being aggressive, although in actuality, it's probably more of a medium texture. I did carry it for about a week without an undershirt and it didn't affect my stomach or whatever. So this, the texture's not rough enough where it will rub and cause raw spots if you carry inside the waistband. They updated the trigger to have a hinge trigger, very similar to the Smith & Wesson m &P and the trigger quality is honestly not improved from like a Gen 3 Glock. The hinge trigger is interesting because the face is super broad and the geometry of the trigger is very important because Glocks have a little hump across the trigger face that makes you steer the trigger as you pull it inappropriately and throw your muzzle off to your support side. Whereas the very broad PSA hinge trigger is very easy to pull straight to the rear and it rewards you with good accuracy when you go to shoot it. The hinge is kind of an interesting design. You won't really notice it as you're pulling the trigger, but once the trigger has been pulled, once it hits the over travel stop at the back of the frame, you can feel it flex a little bit. Not a big deal, but it's just something that you may notice. The trigger is exactly like a Glock 19 Gen 3 trigger, which is to say that it's not great. Uh, you pull on it and the take up is reasonably light, then you get on the firing pin block. Uh, as you continue to pull the trigger, it lifts the firing pin block up out of the way and then you're actually on the wall. Uh, a little bit more pressure and it releases the striker. So the little false wall is kind of annoying, but with training you get used to it and it's not that big a deal. There are videos elsewhere on YouTube that tells you how to grip a Glock appropriately so that you don't throw your shots left. That's a very common with people who are new to shooting Glocks. This gun is no different. If you grip it like a Glock, it should be squared away. The ergonomics on the frame are significantly enhanced. The trigger guard is relieved. You've got one finger groove and a lip that forces your hand kind of up under the guard. But most importantly, they sculpted the grip tang that really kind of lets the gun sit in the web of your hand and it's a very comfortable feeling gun to shoot. Getting up on top of the slide, this is a Cerakote FDE finish with their concealed carry cut, and that is a fancy way of saying that they knocked the edges down off. It's also called a tri-top type cut. They also dehorned the rear of the slide, so if you are an inside the waistband type carrier, then you won't have any issues like snagging your garment as you go to present the pistol. They did put three dot sights on the gun. They are metal, which is an improvement from what's on Glocks, but they're three dot in this year 2021, and pretty, pretty please learn how to use notch and post sights correctly. Don't try and align the three dots. That's not how we really use sights. I promise it's no faster and it certainly isn't any more accurate. And you may have noticed through the trigger guard that it is not a direct Glock clone. They actually redesigned the locking block so that the pin that should be right there is actually moved to the front of the trigger guard and they're using roll pins as opposed to solid pins in the two smaller diameter pins. Most importantly, the trigger guard being redesigned will affect holster fit for some of the Glock holsters. That said, this fit in all of the Glock holsters, it just didn't have the very good retention like I'm used to. So even if you buy the case and some extra magazines, you're still getting into the Glock ecosystem for under $400. And I honestly can't think of a gun I would recommend over this gun for sub $400. It's in the Glock ecosystem. It takes Glock mags, which are super reasonable. It's pretty reliable and it is a good concealed carry gun. Now that said, I did have one issue. The trigger pin actually drifts out ever so slightly to the right side of the frame as I shoot it. Since it is a new gun, this could be the frame kind of wearing in and fire fitting. I don't really know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, and if something fails, I'll do an update video on that, letting you guys know. So I'm legitimately curious, and this is your chance to comment. If you're somebody who is an anti-Glock sort of person, because you don't like the Ergos trigger, whatever it is, would you consider a PSA dagger, considering they took everything that's kind of wrong with the Glock and fixed it? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.